Greetings and salutations, people of the internet. Austin here. I want to thank everyone who watched and liked the Sendine region breakdown. I really appreciate the support. Uh, before I get into things, let's get some housekeeping out of the way for videos going forward on this channel. I had set up a poll on my Twitter and my community tab on how y'all wanted me to handle region breakdowns and DLC expansions. Whether or not y'all wanted me to wait until a DLC was done before doing the region breakdowns as one big video, or doing separate videos once the DLC was completed. Well, based on the votes I got on both polls, I will be doing separate videos for the base region and DLCs after this video going forward. So from here on out, DLC videos will be added once they are completed. For regions without reboots, I'll be doing the originals first, and then I'll just post the uh, reboot uh, breakdowns once those are completed in the future. I might go back and do the same for the regions that do have reboots, but I want to get the reboots out of the way first since I've done my first three already. So, without further ado, I present the reboot of my second fake mon region based on my home state of Texas, the Texcan region. The theme of the starters this time around is transportation and energy with each Pokemon representing a different form of transportation and an associated energy alongside it. Plantaf, the biofuel Pokemon, the grass starter of the region. This little goofball is based on cows and lion, sorry, longhorns as the animal representation, while also representing cars and biofuel to go with the energy part of the line. Uh, not much change with the design process of this Pokemon, just better proportions and rendering. It's still one of the best grass starters I've ever done. Bow Vehicle, the Biofuel Pokemon. The middle stage of the line, it now gains the steel typing as I really lean into the car theme of the design more. The pattern on the head is supposed to look like a windshield, with the ears being the rearview mirrors. The pattern on the arms being the door. Uh, and the silver underbelly is supposed to be the transmission. Overall, this is a pretty good upgrade. Uh, didn't change much. It looks less like an actual cow and more like a Pokemon now, so that's good. Steerthanol. The fertilizer engine Pokemon. The final stage of the line, I massively simplified the design going into the reboot and it's all the stronger for it. Uh, I mainly removed vines from the horns since they were just cluttering up what would other be a very clean design. Uh, I designed the body overall to look like a pickup truck, hence the massive hunchback. The horns and tail now act like exhaust pipes to blow seeds back into the air so they can become trees or uh, crops later. Reseeding was a hidden ability that came from a much later region that I gave this mon in the reboot to help deal with its four times fire weakness. Overall, it's still one of the best grass starters. Maybe top three. Olair, the Pouch Pony Pokemon. The theme of this line is fossil fuels and horseback riding, with a bit, okay, more than a bit, of the Pony Express thrown in. Uh, this probably has changed the least of the base starters going into the reboot, and I guess it really didn't need that many changes in the first place. Uh, upper half of the fire starters in that tier list, but still not in the top three or so. At least in this stage. The other stages, that changes. Polrier, the Pouch Pony Pokemon. A big step up in the reboot in the design department. The original was probably the weakest middle stage of the trio. Uh, I gave it the ground typing since horses would be covered in dirt and mud running across the entire region. Plus, the earth tones contrast nicely against the fiery colors otherwise. Uh, my favorite thing about this design is the smoke cloud spot pattern along the torso and legs. Eruptang, the Pyro Courier Pokemon. The biggest 
upgrade of all the starters in the reboot. The design went from one of my worst to one of my best. I gave it the mud poncho to create a more unique silhouette and allow the pouches along the torso to feel more natural on the body. The cowboy hat mane is still one of my favorite design details on the Mon. This is easily in my top five fire starters. Uh, Giddy Up is one of my favorite hidden abilities for a starter. I kind of wish I would given Stirthanol something more along the lines that the other two have, but Reseeding is still a pretty good ability altogether. Aquaster, the Kinetic Pokemon. This stage changed the most out of the base starters. The uh, theme, before I forget, is river boats and hydrokinetic energy. Well, hydroelectric energy, I guess I should clarify. Uh, I altered the pose on this one to feel more dynamic, added some more yellow into the design for contrast and to hint at the future typing. Overall, it went from a meh design to an aww design. Beevolt, the kinetic Pokemon. The original version of this Pokemon was pretty bad. I didn't like the face, the color balance was off, and it just didn't feel right. Not to mention, the tail was a pain. Thankfully, I fixed all the issues I had with it in the redesign. I vastly prefer this design overall. Uh, it's gained the electric type because I wanted their movement to generate electricity and to play into the hydroelectric energy theme better. Cap Current, the River Channel Pokemon. This Pokemon is more or less the same as its original counterpart, just with a vastly improved face and better color balancing. I based the design off of a riverboat captain, and I think it feels a lot more natural this time around, thankfully. The tail was the biggest upgrade in the redesign. It's a lot shorter than the original version, but it feels more powerful in the current design which is what I wanted in the first place. Cowalope, the timid Pokemon. The Route 1 normal type, this, at the moment of writing this anyway, is the most unchanged design between versions. Only a few minor details changed outside of just better proportions and line work. I based this Mon and its evolution on the Jackalope, which for those unaware is a mythical creature which is basically a rabbit with antelope antlers. Overall, this is just a very cute design. Little squishy friend. Ravelope, the courageous Pokemon. Eh, this is a moderate change between versions. I added the fur cape in the back to break up the silhouette. Uh, I gave it a more defined head. And generally, I just thickened up the legs so it felt stronger. Originally, this was a normal ground type, but I changed it because fighting felt better for this design. It, it made more sense. Honestly, I think I also did it because I needed more fighting types at the time. Overall, this is just a pretty good design. Arachid, the playful pest Pokemon. This is one of my favorite Rat 1 bug types out of all of my regions. This little sucker is adorable. It's also in contention for changing the least between versions. All I really did was give the head and torso a better defined shape. I also changed the eye colors to pop more against the orange. I just love this entire line. It's so good. Moltine, the introvert Pokemon. I kind of wanted to tell a story with this line. Starting out as a happy little kid wanting to be accepted, then closing in on themselves in their middle years. So for the cocoon, I leaned into the molting process scorpions and other arachnids go through and modeled it to look like arachnid, so it really felt like it was molting. And I think it really paid off. It helps make it more distinct from your usual middle stage of a the early bug line. Uh, I mainly fixed the perspective on the top of the head and I closed the mouth more so it felt a little bit more natural. Score Prime, the Phantom Stinger Pokemon. Possibly my favorite Route 1 bug final evolution. This Pokemon hits every mark with me in a design. Uh, I mainly simplified the stingers and the claws so they didn't take too much attention away from the rest of the design. Uh, I altered the colors to stand out more 
and I generally just made this Pokemon the misunderstood loner and little story I was spinning with this line. I love this Pokemon. There are very few bug types that can top it for me. Now, before we move on with the rest of the Pokedex, allow me to explain the sound type within the lore of my region. If you don't care about this, skip to the timestamp here. But for those who do care, or at least mildly curious, allow me to paint the scene for you. The nefarious Team Void is attempting to create a Pokemon to send sound waves into the deepest reaches of space in order to contact and gain control of the legendary Pokemon of the region. They're creating their ultimate weapon, but when they finally bring it to life, a huge surge of energy escapes the creature and sweeps over the entire planet, changing select Pokemon and unleashing some of their genetically engineered sound type Pokemon into the world. But, some sound types outside of the region are seemingly created out of nowhere, as if Arceus is rolling with this new development. For those curious, here are the type matchups. I mainly wanted to buff some of the weaker types with the uh, type balance here and knock some of the stronger ones down a few pegs. This isn't perfect, but it gets the job done and it's what it, I've been rolling with this entire time. Mimusic, the Entertainer Pokemon. The first proper sound type of the region, although its type was changed thanks to the sound type wave, this Route 1 bird is based on mockingbirds and musical performances and honestly got a huge improvement in the reboot. Originally a normal flying type, this Pokemon now boasts a much better color scheme, a more in-depth design with the microphone-shaped feathers, and an overall more laid-back attitude. A massive step up. It is now one of my better Route 1 birds. And if any of you were curious what Harmonize did in the Sendine region, well, now you know. It's an okay ability, though I've done some better sound type original hidden abilities. Rocking Bird, the performer Pokemon. I based this guy off of Elvis Presley, the king, and it's got a humongous buff in the design department and going into the reboot. I really leaned into the Elvis theme and I think it has really helped benefit this mod for the better. The color scheme is a vast improvement and I just love this mod altogether. I'm actually embarrassed looking at the original design for this mod now. Texkinian Nicket, the Fox Pokemon. The first regional variant of the Texkin region, I based these guys off of gray foxes, and I flipped their entire demeanor with their Galarian cousins. These guys steal from criminals and return the items to the original owners. I went with the fairy type to really sell the difference between the two. Uh, I really do love the color scheme on this line. Not much has changed from the original draft, just generally better line work. Texkinian Thiebel, the fox Pokemon. I gave it the steel type because I turned the fur at the end of their tails into a metal detector so they can locate stolen loot better if it was buried underground. Uh, this one got a pretty decent upgrade to the color scheme. And I think the contrast of the dark purple and the gray really work here. The bright blue was added to help break up the color scheme. And overall, this is one of the best uh, regional variants of this region. Dark Hub, the Picnic Crasher Pokemon. They got an okay upgrade in the reboot, as I made the Pokemon more of a quadruped this time around to help set it apart from the other baby bear Pokemon we see in the actual games. Uh, the color scheme got a pretty massive shift, going from a grim snarl blue to the purple and tan you see in this one. Overall, the first version of this Mon felt like cartoon bears that would fight Bugs Bunny versus being an actual Pokemon, which I feel this does now. Berserk, the Titanic Terror Pokemon, a massive improvement over the original version. I took a page out of Ursaluna and shifted it to a quadruped, and it has done wonders. The overall vibe and details of this Mon are still there, but I think it's presented in a much more interesting way. Uh, 
The mohawk fur down the back was a suggestion, and I am so glad I rolled with it since it helps break up the silhouette and just adds that one thing this mon was missing. This is one of the better early game dark types I've done, and I just love this thing. Adaptagill, the versatile fish Pokemon. The early game water type slash fish, this stage is based on the bowfin fish. Say that five times fast. I modeled the tail fin like it is because the actual bowfin has a spot near the base of their tails that looks like their eyes in order to confuse predators. The actual design of this Pokemon hasn't changed too much, just generally better perspective and line work. This is an okay Pokemon, but the real shit is with the evolution. Gardaptfin, the Aqua Apex Pokemon. Slap a dragon's fang on Adaptagill and you get this monster. They're based on Alligator Gars since the Bowfin and Alligator Gars are closely related. Well, not closely, but they're in the same general family. This got a decent amount of changes in the redesign. I streamlined the design of the fins and gave them a little bit more of a curve so they look like tiny little claws. Uh, I altered the head shape so it broke up the silhouette, and I added the pattern on the back to break up the colors. Overall, I love this mod. It's probably one of the better in this region. Raitama, the Volt Roller Pokemon. This Pokemon is the Pika clone of my region, and the only way I can describe the bulk of the changes was I made it chonkier in the reboot. Outside of adding a yellow tip on the tail, I just made this thing fatter in the redesign, and honestly, it's all the better for it. This is probably in the upper echelon of my Pika clones. Bonitox, the flower umbrella Pokemon. So, this is an odd case in the region, as technically this mon is brand new, but isn't at the same time. The basis of this mon is Southern Bells and Blue Bonnets, the state flower of Texas. But in the reboot, I wasn't happy with the original version of this mon, then called Lastana. Since I needed more poison types, I changed the design and name to better fit the new flower basis. The, I, the basic premise of the Mon is the same, but the vibes are completely different. Lantoxa, the Poison Bell Pokemon. Evolves from Bonitox when given the Poison type evolution stone, a Sludge Stone. This didn't change much from the original version, I just gave it a slimmer waist, a better color scheme, and a generally more evil expression on her face, especially with the eyes. This Femme Fatale came out pretty well overall. It really gives off that deadly but beautiful vibe I wanted this to as a flower. Gatherwing, the collective Pokemon. This is the wishy-washy of the region. This little guy hasn't changed much in the design department, mainly just some proportion changes and generally better line work. The base stage is adorable in my eyes, so I don't have much to say about it. The colony form, on the other hand, got a major buff in the redesign, becoming much sleeker with clearly defined body segments. One of the better wishy-washy mons, but I still think my favorite is from my China-themed region. Few Turtle, the fortune teller Pokemon. I love this entire evolution line. This might be the strongest three-stage line in the entire region. Uh, I thickened up the previously noodle legs the original draft had and gave the crystal ball on its head a major upgrade in the render department. Hell, that part's probably consistent across every portion of the line. Fortunus, the fortune teller Pokemon. I based this stage off of the crystal ball setups you would see cheesy fortune tellers use like in a fair, the tablecloth being the edge of the shell and the patterns being the decoration on the quote unquote fabric. The colors got a pretty big buff here, the blue really popping off. Otherwise this mod hasn't changed much, it's still just a good design overall. Torteller, the premonition Pokemon, the best render in the entire region not even close. The space tear combined with the crystal ball on its stomach really helps the fortune telling vibe, specifically the premonition I wanted with this. I simplified the base of the body a lot so the galactic shell and the render did the heavy lifting as they should. 
I love this Pokemon so much. Sentinel, the Stealth Wing Pokemon. I based this Pokemon off of Great Horned Owls and Stealth Bombers to reference how owls can fly in complete silence thanks to modified flight feathers. The bomb it carries is an owl pellet that it drops as a payload onto their prey. Uh, the proportions on the face got a pretty good uh, facelift. The eyebrows becoming a lot more pronounced and the color scheme just getting a little touch up here and there. Rocky Ghast, the old fort Pokemon. Another regional turned convergent Pokemon. If I had a nickel for every rock ghost example of that, I'd have two nickels, and you know the rest of this joke already. I based the line off of old time war forts, specifically the Alamo and the Final Evolution. Uh, the, the base design didn't change too much in the reboot, only making the cannon and the cannonballs feel more rusted and having better texturing on the rocks. We really should have had a rock ghost end game by now. Palastone, the Rock Fortress Pokemon. I changed a lot of this Pokemon's design in the second time around, moving a good portion of the de design elements to another Pokemon. I made the arms into actual lookout towers to break up the shape of the silhouette. Um, I simplified a lot of the details and let the texture do most of the heavy lifting. I probably could have done better on the render for the ground surrounding the Pokemon, but I'm not going to let that go get to me that much. Fort of Phantom, the Eternal Fortress Pokemon. The first convergent evolution I've done so far. I added this Pokemon in the reboot to further along the convergent Pokemon concept and allow for more opportunities, and I'm really glad I did. This Pokemon slaps. I added a lot of the cut elements from the original version of Palastone into this Pokemon, mainly the arms. I really love the cannon fingers. I think that's a great design detail for this Pokemon, and the bright red eyes really pop against the color scheme of this. This Pokemon was a lock for my in-game team. If you're curious, the, uh, <laughs> the Firestarter was my pick if I was actually playing this as a game. A Cougar, the Booming Roar Pokemon. The first fully-fledged sound types added to the reboot, this line is based on mountain lions and cougars, something I really should have had animal-wise in the first pass of this region. I love this Pokemon. I think it is adorable. The only major change I would have made now is make the brown accents darker. I went with the sound type for this line because a mountain lion's roar slash cry can be heard for a long distance away. Ventrilocat, the Icy Cry Pokemon. Evolves via an Ice Stone, this Pokemon can use its mastery over its voice to throw said voice in any direction to fool their prey. The pattern on the body is supposed to resemble sound waves, but ironically it looks like my wireless symbol as I write this. This has a great combination of colors in my opinion. I like to use this range of blue-green a lot for my sound types upon reflection. Root First, the Brawling Brat Pokemon. This Pokemon's name is a play on the Bobcat's scientific name, Lynx Rufus, Fur, and Rude. Since this thing is a proper asshole. I mainly fix the proportions with this version, particularly in the legs so they don't look broken as with the original version. Uh, I love the expression I gave this mod. This thing has a big personality just from a glance. Bowlinx, the ambush stone Pokemon. I designed the fur pattern on the back to look like a mountain to better sell the rock typing. Uh, I brightened up the red on this Pokemon drastically from the original so it doesn't get lost with the rest of the color scheme. I darkened the brown on the ears and paws to look so it's closer to black. And I fixed the leg position so it makes a lot more sense. Uh, this is a much needed upgrade for this fluffy killing machine and now it's a pretty good evolution for Rufurus. Asper Pillar, the Spike Fur Pokemon. I based these guys off of Pus Caterpillars and their extremely spiky fur. Uh, not much changed here, mainly just extending the fur over the face and head and fixing the orange stripe down the middle so it feels less tacked on. This is a solid early game bug, the Weedle of the region if you will, not much to say here. Spikoo, the Barb Shell Pokemon. 
Another Pokemon in contention for changing the least between versions, mainly just smoothing out the lines and adjusting the sizes of some of the spikes. Oh, and changing the eye color. This is a solid Kakumon, but I still think Moltine takes the cake for this region in that regard. Toxifer, the Poison Pelt Pokemon. Based on the Southern Flannel Moth, the poison type comes from the poisonous spines that make up their fur. Uh, the design itself remained the same, the exception now being the exposed thorax. A whole new color palette, almost, to stand out. I'm partial to the red in the design. I think it came out pretty well, but honestly, this Pokemon would probably not be anything special in-game. Splash Child, the impatient Fisher Pokemon. A big upgrade from the original, which is just awful in comparison. I admit this Pokemon could use a bit more of a concept behind it in this stage since at the moment it's just a heron. But I do think the lack of originality here is made up for by both of its split evolutions. A Sharon, the long cast Pokemon. Evolve some Splash Child, a uh, water stone. I based this one off of old fashioned fishermen and herons. The orange around the neck is supposed to resemble a flotation device, and the tail feathers a fold out chair to sit down on as they wait. Uh, the proportions are the major thing that changed with this design, mainly in the legs. Of the two, I think this is the weaker concept, but it still has a very strong silhouette. Insulator comes from the rubber boots the legs are designed around. And I think this is a good hidden ability overall. Cranomite, the explosive fisher Pokemon. Evolves from Splash Child with a Firestone. This Pokemon is designed around hillbillies and dynamite fishing. This is the better Mon of the split evolutions, in my opinion, with the more interesting Pokemon design. Uh, the reed it carries in its foot is supposed to resemble dynamite as it throws them at their prey or their opponents. TNT was a fun but busted ability, which was nerfed since I have created it thankfully going into future regions. These guys are a menace in the region, but I kind of love them for it. Texkinny and Choodle, the snapping Pokemon. I base this regional variant on alligator snapping turtles, which is where the dragon type comes in. The dark type comes from their nasty attitude and violent nature. Only slight tweaks were needed with this Pokemon going into the reboot, mostly in the rendering and texture. This is one of the best regional variants in the Texkin region. Dexkinian Dreadnought, the Bite Pokemon. Another Pokemon that didn't change much in the reboot. The main change was a slight shift in color for the main body and for the tail spike. The Shinies for this line also got a major overhaul since the originals were a crime against good taste. Uh, don't have a whole lot to say about this Mon. Uh, these things would be found near swamps or near ponds if this were an actual game. Terra Snap, the Chomp Pokemon, evolves from Texkinian Dreadnought once it learns Dragon Rage and is based on the Terra Skew. I think that's how it's pronounced anyway. A French Dragon Turtle with six legs. I chose this creature for the inspiration because at the time I thought it would make for the best visual upgrade for this line. This got the biggest change out of all the Mons of this line going into the reboot. I simplified the neck details and the tiny details across the body to make it a lot more streamlined. The perspective also got a much needed change going from a side view to the preferred three quarter view. If I didn't have another dragon type and dark type on my in game team, this would have made the cut. Gatorth. The Mud Lizard Pokemon. Based on alligators hiding in marshy water, only minor proportion changes with this tiny fella were needed. My favorite thing about this Pokemon is the expression. Uh, it's got some good abilities. I don't think I would change anything about the current design as it is here. Bog Gator, the Swamp Apex Pokemon. The evolved form of Gate Earth. Only minor proportion changes were needed going into the redraw. I added some more details on the underbelly and to the mud coating for it to help feel a little bit more three-dimensional. This is definitely one of the best mons in the region. Maybe not top 10, but top 20 for sure. 
Road Roller, the electric skater Pokemon. I based this Pokemon off of bleh, Road Runners and Roller Derbies, hence the helmet and the skates in this design. Originally, this was an electric ground type, but I changed it to electric sound to go off of the fact they can break the sound barrier with ease at their top speed. The color scheme and the pose are the things that have changed the most with this redesign. I streamlined the body to help it feel a little bit more aerodynamic and fast. Keep an eye on this mod, it might just be getting some love in the DLC. Polyote, the snow pup Pokemon. Oh boy, this one. You might notice the face is more than a little janky. Well, I had rotated the head to get it into the, its new position, and I forgot to redraw the face to compensate for the new angle at the time. So yeah, now it looks like this. Other than that, I think this is a solid design overall. <laughs> I like the legs guy getting a uh, minor change of proportion from the original draft. Sayotice, the mental howl Pokemon. This got a massive change from the original design. I removed a lot of the ice covering the body in the first draft. Uh, I upped the saturation on the color and I added a lot more floof around the chest, neck, and legs. This is honestly one of the better redesigns in the reboot. I imagine this would be used by Team Void, but I also see them mainly using Dark Steel and Sound types, at least with the grunts. Surspring, the Coiled Snake Pokemon. This little guy is based on uh, Cottonmouths and Coiled Springs, if the name wasn't blunt enough. Uh, I just made the body longer and I fixed the positioning of the coil so it looks like it has some actual weight to it now. I really love the shiny. There's not much more to say on this Pokemon. Coilitter, the Toxic Surprise Pokemon. I added this Pokemon to the reboot to help add some more poison and steel types. It evolves from Surspring after leveling up while holding a metal coat. I based this Pokemon on Coral Snakes, Jack in the Boxes, and Trash Cans. This being a Mimic Mon you'd see in the overworld if you were searching through everything looking for items. I had so much help designing this mod. If not for one person in particular, this design would not be nearly as good as it is. This is one of the best Pokemon added into the reboot of the region. This thing is spectacular. Manta Pena, the Spicy Claw Pokemon. So, I made this mod before Scoville was shown off and Scarlet and Violet when the it had dropped. So once I played the game, I had to address this in the reboot, so keep an eye on that later on. Uh, the biggest changes for this redesign was mainly this cleaner line work and drawing more attention to the flames scattered about the body. I added the sparks on the legs that look like uh, spurs on cowboy boots. Honestly, this is still one of my favorite mods from this region. Leapfrog, the skittish Pokemon. I based this scared little lad on Pronghorns. Uh, the original draft of this Mon was a ground type, but I swapped some things around and changed it to a fairy type in the reboot. Uh, I drastically changed the colors and proportions as the original version was just so boring. Added to that, adding the pink to the color scheme really helped save this design. Prong Alarm, the early warning Pokemon. This might be the most drastic glow up in the entire region. Arguably, anyway. At least at the time of writing this script for the reboot. The original version of this Mon was just a pronghorn with some pink accents. And I knew I had to change that. So I made this thing more of a siren in the reboot. The red and blue acting like emergency service lights to warn their herds of danger. Uh, I added more black and vastly increased the saturation on the central body, making it the uh, tan you see now. This thing is a proper Pokemon, at least with this design. Such a glow up. Bulo, the Forgotten Necklace Pokemon. A new ghost type added to the reboot of the region. Uh, I based this Pokemon on Bolo Ties and Lost Family Heirlooms. This Pokemon took a few passes to nail down, but I knew what I wanted the design going in and I'm more than happy with how it turned out. I imagine this Pokemon is fairly weak stat-wise, so I gave it Fashion Statement to help this thing be more of a support monster in double battles. Texcanian Tangle, the Dizzy Bush Pokemon. One of my favorite regional variants of the reboot. I based these guys off of Tumbleweeds. Shout out to Bramblegast, it now has a buddy to roll around with. 
and mainly just darken portions of the body to help it stand out more and feel less cluttered visually. This thing is always dizzy from being blown around the region, hence the constantly swirly eyes. The texturing on this thing really helps this thing feel a lot more organic to me. Dextinian Tangrowth, the Dizzy Bush Pokemon. Everything I said about Tangela applies here as well. Though I did darken the green from the previous stage, Wind Rider was a godsend from Scarlet and Violet for this Pokemon. It is the perfect ability for these two stages. Tangferno, the Bushfire Pokemon. A split evolution for Texkinny and Tangela once given a Firestone. I based this Pokemon off of burning tumbleweeds or fields. The swirly eyes continue in this stage as this thing is constantly getting dazed from the smoke it creates as it just stumbles around the region. This is my favorite stage of the line, the proportions getting a good deal uh, buffed in the reboot, actually having more defined legs now. Lutor, the burglar Pokemon. Based on the adorable trash pandas themselves, raccoons, and of course, burglars. I wanted to lean into these Pokemons always sifting through people's stuff, food, or otherwise, and then stealing them when no one is around. Uh, I mainly shortened this Pokemon's body to feel more like a first stage, and simplified the tail colors to just three so it was easier to read at just a glance. I love this little gremlin, it really didn't need to change much. Raccoon, the Master Thief Pokemon. Most of the changes to this Mon were in the face, giving it a more devious smile and adding the yellow to the eyes to pop against the magenta mask, alongside changing up the tail and scarf colors. Um, this is honestly one of the best dark types I've ever done. Uh, these guys would be the arch rivals of Dexkinian, Thievil, and Nicket, respectively. Trash Hog, the Dumpster Diver Pokemon. Much like Raytama, the bulk of the changes came from the form of additional chunk to the redesign, alongside giving it a more realistic looking mouth. Some minor color changes here and there for color balance, this mon was good to go. It's honestly a tad barren conceptually, but I feel like the evolution makes up for it. Borsura, the Dumpster Diver Pokemon. Evolves via Metal Coat, the name is a combo of Bor and Basura, which is Spanish for trash, which is fitting because that's what this Pokemon mainly eats. Huge upgrade in the redesign. The rendering on the reboots, just overall palette, is spe fucking spectacular in my eyes. Really selling the metal sheen and the gross, slimy trash surrounding its mouth. This is a night and day difference between versions. These guys would be the arch rivals of Koi Litter. Mooncoke, the Lunar Lizard Pokemon. Based on Mediterranean house geckos, aka Moon Lizards, hence the name. The original version of this Pokemon was hot garbage and I feel bad looking at it. The basic design elements are there, but the colors and render really do it justice now. I gave it idle shift so it has a designated role in battle as a trick room setter for niche plays. Overall one of the better mons of this region. Goten, the voracious Pokemon. This brainless little goober is based on goats and their habit of eating everything in sight. I gave this thing an actual neck in the redesign and made the can legs slash hoofs bigger alongside fixing the perspective on the can opener horns. This mon is nothing special, but I love him. He's a little good lad. Lexkinian Ekans, the bandit snake Pokemon. Fun fact, this was the first regional variant I ever drew even before I started making regions. For the redesign, I toned down the overt rock sections on the body and made the head more visible against the color scheme. This thing is based on old-fashioned bandits and desperados alongside diamondback rattlesnakes. It felt really good to give this guy the love he deserved. Zexkinian Arbok, the bandit snake Pokemon. Originally a rock dark type like his pre-evolution, I changed it to a rock dragon type due to my lack of dragon types an Arbok meaning some much needed love and power to its name. The basic idea of this mod remained the same, but it got a much needed visual overhaul to really sell its draconic nature and the bandit theme. My favorite thing is still the hood slash hat this thing has. It's just great. Maraktu, the cactus Pokemon. A much needed evolution in the reboot of this region. This evolves from Maraktus once is given a Harmony Stone, which is a sound type evolution stone. I don't know if I've gone over that already or not. My memory's fading me. And is based on the Prickly Pear Cactus. 
The design took a long time to get right, but it was more than worth it. The hair is my favorite thing about this design, giving it a really nice silhouette. Imbalance isn't an ability I use too often, but it's a fun one. She was an easy lock-in for my in-game team. Spummel, the boxing spider Pokemon. I based this line off of some tarantulas burying themselves in the sand where it's cooler than coming out in mating season. I made the head slash torso look like boxing training gear with the front arm being boxing gloves. Honestly, this was a really good addition to the region and the reboot. And I love doing bug type Pokemon that aren't bug type. Tarantula, the underground boxer Pokemon. It evolved from Spummel after using Dig 15 times in battle. I leaned into the underground aspect with the tarantulas and made this thing literally an underground boxer. For a while, I debated having this thing's whole body be uncovered, but it being partially buried in sand actually adds a lot to the design for me. These things would be ambush predators in the desert segment if this was an actual game. They are the rival slash prey to Vespector. Or Vantum, the spectral parasite Pokemon. Based on tarantula hawks, this might be the most cruel Pokemon in the entire region for reasons I will get into with its evolution. I gave this mod some actually good proportions in the reboot, unlike the original version. It made the eyes a lot more innocent looking despite this thing being an absolute demon. The partial transparency of the ectoplasm really helps sell the ghost type for me. Best Spectre, the Ghost Wasp Pokemon. Evolves from more advanced once it steals 250 HP from enemy Pokemon. A big upgrade in the redesign. I know I keep saying it, but it doesn't make it any less true. This Pokemon went from meh to an absolute unit of a design. The skeleton slash Grim Reaper aspect is much easier to read with its new pose, and the ecto that ectoplasm appendages look a lot better with the new render. This thing will inject a larvantum directly into their prey, and it will eat their soul from the inside out before it floats out of their corpse to do it to somebody else. Dexkinian Heatmore, the Anteater Pokemon. For this variant, I made them a lot more hot-tempered and violent, like a volcano waiting to burst, hence the design and the typing. The pose and proportions changed a good bit with this Pokemon in the reboot, since I felt the original didn't change enough and failed to embrace its full potential. The Magma Tongue is my favorite thing about this render. Uh, I was starting to get good at rendering lava here, but I don't think I mastered it until the next rebooted region. It gained the rock armor to also better deal with the Texcadian Durant's massive stinger. Speaking of which, Texcadian Durant, the Dragon Ant Pokemon, Based on the Velvet Ant, which, fun fact, is actually a wingless wasp. This was originally a bug dark type in the first draft, but I changed it to dragon to fix my criminal lack of that typing. It got a lot bulkier in the redesign, now able to support the massive stinger it has. I streamlined the color scheme so it felt less cluttered and more cohesive. It lost a lot of defense, but it gained more power in the process. Blowbass, the Glutton Guild Pokemon. This was actually the early game fish in the first draft of the region, but I moved it down here this time. Based on the Guadalupe Bass, this thing is a chonker, and honestly became a lot more cartoony in the redesign, with more simplified proportions and shapes. They'll eat everything in front of them and will bully weaker Pokemon to steal their food. I'm glad I made Adaptagill the early game fish, but this is still a pretty good two-stage line. Sharbage. The Omnivore Pokemon. Evolves from Blowbass with this leveled up in open ocean. This thing is based on tiger sharks and garbage trucks. It leads to the tiger shark's habit of eating everything to play on it, essentially being a living garbage truck with this Pokemon. The gills are the handles you would see on the side of the vehicles, and the mouth is the compactor in the back of the truck. The tail fin is supposed to look like the claw they used to grab the crap trash cans off the street. Uh, some big color changes in this redesign, the green really selling the dirty look I wanted this Pokemon to have, and make the gray and silver pop a lot easier. Charbacue, the Burning Bull Pokemon. A missed opportunity in the original region, I added this mon because I had to have a barbecue mon in a Texas theme region. What the hell was I thinking back then?
Uh, I love the render on the fire with this mod. I think the glowing cores and the chest and the tail really sell the heat this mod is giving off. And the spatula shaped tail is a good visual gag I couldn't resist. Kindling is another hidden ability I need to bring back in future regions. Dipoda Kick, the kickoff Pokemon. Based off of Kangaroo Rats and American Football, this is another one of my favorite mods from the region. This bait got uh, much better proportions. God, I'm tired of saying that. In the uh, face and legs, primarily. The color scheme got way more drastic contrasts, and the football shaped tail became a lot more blatant this time around. Arena Cone, the Spine Bud Pokemon. Barely changed overall. Just the spine bud on the back shortening in length, but getting wider overall. The name is a combo of Arena Sine, probably butchered that. The scientific subfamilies hedgehogs fall under, and of course, pine cones. You'd find these guys in flower patches or in deserts if this was an actual game. Cactopine, the spine bud Pokemon. Originally, this mod was based on the prickly pear cactus, but I had to change that after Maractune. So now this Pokemon is modeled after the Hedgehog cactus. Yes, that's real. Look it up. Uh, I mainly cut down on the number of spines on the back, but made them bigger to compensate. I added the purple to help transition between the green and the red. It's a solid mod. Honestly, not much to talk about. Texkinny and Grimer, the sludge Pokemon. These variants are based on oil and oil refineries. Other than the barrel acting as a hat slash hiding spot for this Pokemon, it didn't change much outside of better texturing and slightly darker eyes. Honestly, this is probably one of the most thematic regional variants I got. Texkinny and Muck, the sludge Pokemon. Evolves from Texkinny and Grimer when given a Firestone. This form is based on oil fires generally across the board. I added the drill to reference uh, drilling for oil and to break up the sludge with a more interesting design concept outside the fire. Uh, they can set the drill on fire when they attack, probably for a signature move. This Pokemon is pretty good and it stayed all right from the base region into the redesign, so I can't say much more about it for now. Maybe next region I'll have a little bit more to say. Keep that in mind. Jack Otter, the Winter Coat Pokemon. I made the fur portion around the neck much bigger in the redesign, uh, bumped up the saturation on the colors, and increased the length of the tail. This is easily one of the cutest mods I've ever done. This little sea otter is supposed to be wearing a thick winter jacket with the scarf being the tail. He's just precious. Odd Thermal, the body temperature Pokemon. Evolves from Jack Otter when giving an Ice Stone. The body is now supposed to resemble a thermal wetsuit to help it, uh, to help it sell living in frigid waters and still staying nice and warm. Honestly, I just gave this mod a longer neck and some better line work with some minor color adjustments in the reboot. Frostier, the Ice Antler Pokemon. I should have shrunk the head on this redesign a tad. The original was too small and now this one is too big. I just can't win. Uh, I toned down the amount of ice on the actual body and made the dark blue a lot more pronounced here. Not many changes for this admittingly kind of forgettable mon. Thankfully the evolution is peak in my eyes. Moose Snow, the ice antler Pokemon. A big glow up for this Pokemon. I made the ice slash fur poncho go down further on the body and the snow pattern on the legs a lot more simplified to keep this mod from getting too busy. I drastically changed the antlers and what do you see now? They were originally completely made out of ice in the original draft and it was just too cluttered for its own good. Arctic Rage is such a good ability. It's probably too broken. I really need to write down all of my custom hidden abilities in a Google Doc, just for reference in the future. Narpoon, the Spearhorn Pokemon. So, this is an interesting case. I changed this Mon from in the original draft into a baby form for a new Pokemon I added into the reboot. Originally, this was a Water Steel type. This thing obviously being based on narwhals and harpoons. The basic design is still here, but greatly simplified for the purposes of now being a first stage baby mon. This thing's adorable, I will give it that. 
While Acoustic, the tuning horn Pokemon, evolves from Narpoon when given a Harmony Stone, this mod is now primarily based on tuning forks alongside the already existing Narwhal bases. The horn slash tuning forks took so long to get the perspective as good as it is probably. Fumbled there. And even then, it's still probably wrong. The pattern on the side is supposed to resemble speakers and to break up the large swath of dark blue that makes up the bulk of the body. This is a fantastic Pokemon in my eyes. Manowire, the ice current Pokemon. This Pokemon is based on the Portuguese Manowar and exposed electrical wires. Like with Frostier, I removed a lot of ice that was covering this Pokemon. Uh, I made the top of its head a lot bigger in the redesigns and made the tentacles splay out instead of folding inwards. The uh, ends of the tentacles are supposed to look like exposed electrical wiring. Honestly, I think this is one of the most creative Pokemon in the region. Snowmite, the Snowball Pokemon. A hefty redesign, I made this Pokemon look more organic and less like a bug in a snowball in the original design. Granted, there was nothing wrong with that design, but I wanted to take it in a different direction going into the second pass. Uh, I decided to have this Pokemon's eyes closed to look like the stones you would use on a snowman's face. Uh, the ice crystals were put there to break up the color and help give it a little bit more form in the design. Snowtar, the snowman Pokemon. A split evolution for Snowmite when it levels up holding the blue scarf. Uh, I added this evolution since at the time I was going to remove its other evolution, Snowipede, and replace it with this Pokemon. I changed my mind and made it a split evolution. Both evolutions follow a snowman theme, but this one is more your bog standard snowman more than anything. The real face is on the last segment and the one up top is used to fool predators into attacking it. The nose is admittingly a tad phallic in retrospect, but I think it helps get the entire design across, so I can overlook that unfortunate fact. Snowipede, the Snow Parade Pokemon. Evolves from Snowmite when it levels up holding the Red Scarf. A drastic change, this Pokemon keeps the overall centipede theming of the original, but it's now more in the way of Phalanx rather than Scolipede. This Pokemon is primarily based off of Frosty the Snowman and musical troops, each head having a different role in the song. It took forever to get this right, but it was worth it. The segments in between each heads are used to confuse predators, much like the top head on Snowtar. Calibur, the Nectar Sniper Pokemon. This was supposed to be in the original version of the region, but I could not get it to look right at the time, so I scrapped it until the reboot. I made it a hummingbird so I could turn the beak into a sniper rifle. The spack that, despite my lack of fondness for firearms, this Pokemon came out great. The wings are gun handles and the tail feathers are ammo clips, with the feathers coming off the wings supposed to resembling uh, bullets. My favorite thing is the six shooter gun chamber pattern on the chest. That took me a while to get the perspective right. I'm really glad I did add this to the region. Driftwood, the Balloon Squid Pokemon. The second and last convergent Pokemon line added to the reboot of the region. This line is based on different types of squids. This one being the Big Fin Squid. I tried my best to make my squid convergent Driftloom different from the others done by many talented artists, and I think I succeeded in that regard. The hair on the top of the head is sea foam that gets attached when these things come to shore. Drifflopod, Blimp Squid Pokemon. This stage is based on the Vampire Squid, hence the very specific tentacles the species is known to have with this design. This is probably the weakest of the evolutionary line, but it still came out all right. I really do love the color scheme on this mon. The red really pulling in the eye against the various blues. But now it's time for the real star of this line. Driffable, the dirigible Pokemon. Evolves from Drifflepod when exposed to a Sky Stone. This monster is based on colossal squids and dirigibles. The sea foam around the head is supposed to resemble clouds parting as a blimp passes through them. 
The tentacles took a few tries to get right, but it was worth the headache for this peak Pokemon. This was this is one of my best Pokemon ever. And this was easily going on my Texcan region team. Well, Kinnear, the Spark Shell Pokemon. This tiny little menace is based on Welks and Buccaneers, aka Pirates. This is one of my favorite Pokemon lines from this region. I think it is adorable and it communicates the theme perfectly. Some might be asking, why pirates in a Texas region? Because I want to, that's why. I shrunk the body and the redesigns so the hat slash shell was bigger and to create a larger contrast. Aside of just better line work, it's pretty much just that in terms of changes. Core Snail, the Lightning Toxin Pokemon. Evolves from Will Kinnear when exposed to a Sludge Stone. This is primarily based on Blackbeard and Cone Snails, hence the Poison typing. It's got a pretty drastic change with the colors now, boasting the bright blue you see for the central body and accents on the shell hat. I made the colors more saturated to sell the bright colors that a lot of poisonous animals have to warn off predators, and angled the cutlass upward so it looked more dangerous. This Pokemon is one of the best in the region, and it would have been on my team if I didn't have a stronger poison type on there already. Dexkinian Quillfish, the Balloon Pokemon. I based this line off of the Least Pufferfish and Ghostly Possession. This got a significant buff in the redesign. I simplified a lot from the original draft and changed the ectoplasm color to stand out against the muted blue and purple of the main body. My favorite detail is still the skull tail pattern. I love this line, but I still got to admit the Hisuian variants are still superior. Over Quill for the win. Quill Ecto, the Phantom Balloon Pokemon, evolves via an Ecto Stone. The spirits inside of its previous evolution have overtaken the body and now pilot it around as Quillfish is now locked inside the tail. The original version of this Pokemon was an overdesigned mess, and I'm happy the redesign came out as good as it has. I cut down a lot on the patterns from the original and went with a less is more approach with this design. I think this has a great color balance and a really good design. Squall Spike, the Shark Dog Pokemon. One of the most drastic redesigns in the reboot, this Pokemon barely resembles the original, and it's all the better for it. I based this off of Spur Dog Sharks, which have a tiny poisonous spine near their dorsal fins, so I leaned into that for the basis of this design. It was a suggestion to lean into the dog aspect of Spur Dog, so I turned the spikes into the studs on a dog's collar, and just generally made the Pokemon more dog-like, hence the hanging out tongue. This actually feels like a real Pokemon now in my eyes. Hackation, the Razor Claw Pokemon. Probably the most successful Mon from the original and this version to actually looking like an actual Pokemon. Wow, that was redundant. Anyway, this Pokemon has barely changed from the original draft, mainly just altering the face a tad and slightly better proportions. This little guy is based on crabs and hacksaws. Honestly, this is just one of my best designs, period, regardless of the region. Crustsaw, the Motor Claw Pokemon, evolves via Duskstone. This Pokemon is based on Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series. I had to do a Leatherface Mon in a Texas region. It's required, and boy did this thing benefit more than most from the redesign. The original version was an overcomplicated mess of different crab Pokemon stitched together to resemble Leatherface's human skin masks, but I scrapped that aspect and modeled it more after the man himself. The pattern now resembling his apron and tie, the little hair it has on the back, and of course his chainsaw claw. This Pokemon joined my team the moment I finished the redesign. Papyro, the bell pepper Pokemon. Once I was introduced to Scoville and Scarlet and Violet, I had to give it some love here, and what better way than with a third evolution? It evolves from Scoville and after it defeats four Manta Penos and battle while holding spicy seeds. I've seen a lot of three-headed Scovillain evolutions, so I wanted to stand out, so I gave it the fourth head on the tail, 
so it can be more unique and reference more colors of bell peppers. Uh, this is one of my favorite cross-gen evolutions and is probably one of the strongest designs in the region. My favorite detail is each head having a slightly different expression. Pamperlock, the spoiled trickster Pokemon. A split evolution from Purloin, it evolves when exposed to a Moonstone. I based this Pokemon off of House Cats and Ocelots. Uh, this changed a decent amount in the redesign, mainly spikier fur to break up the silhouette more, and a better pose to boot. I toned down the pattern on the body a lot so it wasn't as busy. The whiskers were added to make the silhouette more dynamic and stand out more against Lipard. This is a solid evolution, but it is probably the weakest cross-gen evolution in the bunch. Cantharno the Blazing Antenna Pokemon. I based this Pokemon off of Blister Beetles and Flamethrowers. Its animal bases can spray a blistering agent called Cantharidin, hence the name we got here. With that can blister and burn when it makes contact with its opponent. So I turned that aspect into a flamethrower. I cut down on the number of legs in the redesign so it was less cluttered and made the fuel tanks on the back much bigger so it felt more imposing and a better silhouette. This is a solid Pokemon. Nothing special, but I enjoy it. Texkinny and Cricketu, the Cricket Pokemon. So the question that might be going through your minds is why isn't this a bug sound type? This thing is based on a damn banjo, so what the hell? So I made regular Cricketune into a bug sound type when I was altering the types of existing Pokemon. So this thing had to be a bug normal type, but I gave it a hidden ability, so it has sound type stab. Compensate. As for the design, it's barely changed, other than making the claws slightly bigger. Yeah, not much to say else. This is an okay design. Crickestrum, the guitar Pokemon. Evolves from Texkinny and Cricketune after using Hyper Voice 15 times in battle. This Pokemon has changed a lot more than its previous stage in the reboot, mainly in the legs and having the wings in the back be bigger. I based this off of acoustic guitars and country music stars. I love the guitar tuners on the leg kind of being like studs on metal pants or even frills. Uh, this is a solid regional evolution in my eyes. Electricity, the Spark Puppy Pokemon. The goodest boy. This line is based on Blue Lacy's, the state dog of Texas, and this thing is so cute. Only the proportions have really changed with this Pokemon, seeing as how it really didn't need any major changes otherwise. This is just a good pupper. Zumbi, the Restless Spirit Pokemon. The evolved form of Electricity, not even death, can stop this energetic pupper from running around and having fun. Uh, this changed a good bit in the reboot, mainly stripping down some of the more unnecessary details and making this Pokemon, ironically, feel more alive. The most noticeable change was making the tail seem more 3D and having the eyes be more expressive. I love this Pokemon. This is easily in the top 10 of the region. Apostle, the Astral Vermin Pokemon. Based on possums playing dead to escape predators, I leaned into that with this Pokemon's soul actually leaving its body to act like a lookout and pseudo meat shield. Uh, the design didn't change outside of some color switches and the soul being more detailed. Astro Projection was an interesting hand ability to keep this Mon feeling balanced while still having a role in battle, despite it being not great stat-wise. Mornvian, the Widow Pokemon. Based on Morning Doves, this Pokemon didn't change too much in the redesign, only shifting some colors around and making the eyes redder to look like she's been crying. The major change was having the tears floating into the air. I figured that would help make this Pokemon feel more otherworldly and supernatural. Uh, originally, this was a flying ghost type, but I made it part sound to play into ghostly wails and cries. I think this is honestly a very clever concept. Light Noon, the Lightning Dash Pokemon. Of all some Lanoon with a Thunderstone, this Pokemon is based on the Koti. This and the next cross-gen evolution were suggestions. From a collaborative of mine, I bounce ideas off of occasionally, since I wanted more cross-gen evolutions in the reboot. I actually think this is a pretty good design and evolution for the base Lanoon, and it contrasts nicely against Obstagoon and the Galarian variants of this line. Overall, this has a good silhouette, and I think it just works really well. Barrelet, the Fist Tail Pokemon. Evolves from Furt when exposed to a Combat Stone. 
a fighting type evolution stone I introduced in another region. Like with Light Moon, this Pokemon was added to the reboot to add more cross-gen evolutions, this being based on the black-footed ferret. I wanted to keep the long loot noodle-like body of ferret into this design, but I made the long I made the arms longer to compensate and feel like it has some power and balance against these smaller lower legs. The tail ends becoming a fist, I feel it really works to visually sell the fighting type. Of the two back-to-back -back cross gen evolutions, this is my favorite. Dexcanian Dwebble, the Dirt Clump Pokemon. I base this regional variant off of a pun with crabgrass. You will see the links I go to just for puns later in future regions. This and its evolution barely changed in the reboot, just giving some better textures and line work. I really do like this Pokemon despite not having a whole lot to say about it. Dexcanian Crustal. The grass root Pokemon. I modeled the block on its back to look like a piece of sidewalk taking out of the ground with the dirt underneath it. I did slightly touch up the colors on the dirt block and grass. Not much else, honestly. Uh, Stubborn Weed is a fun hidden ability. Thought I would help remove one of its four times weaknesses. Asnormous, the Comet Pokemon. Evolves from Minior when given a Firestone. This is easily the best cross gen evolution of the region. Except no substitutes. This gigantic fireball is based on large asteroids, suns, and supernovas to a lesser extent. These things live in the upper atmosphere and will eat minior or anything they can get their mouth around to keep their fires burning. The design didn't change much, but the render got a major upgrade and it looks amazing. My favorite design detail are the minior being caught in its orbit and just to show off the sheer scale of this evolution. Staroptera, the Astrobat Pokemon. This got a major redesign in the reboot, trying to better fit in with the space theme this line has. I modeled it after a homemade bottle rocket you would pump with water or air to shoot it off into the sky, the tail being modeled after the foot pump. I simplified the patterns on the body and ears so the design would speak for itself and be less cluttered. I really love the colors on this line. I think they mesh really well together. Stargoyle, the astronaut Pokemon. This got a also got a major redesign in the reboot, mainly streamlining the design into something more natural looking. Uh, this thing is based on gargoyles and astronauts, hence the white and the clear face mask to reference spacesuits. I cut out uh, the gray from the original design and redistributed the remaining colors. Uh, I simplified the wings and added the spike at the end of the tail for uh, some color balancing. This is one of the best Pokemon I have ever created. It really benefited from the experience I got since the original design. Told Moltu, the Mud Nest Pokemon. This and the next Pokemon were added into the region to help balance out some of the typings. Uh, I based this off of a Texas Toad who will let out a loud croak slash cry to attract females and they typically build nests near mud puddles for their tadpoles, hence the typing it has. Uh, I love the expression on this mod, just something about it gets me. I can't explain it. Uh, this is a pretty solid entry into the region. Hammeram, the crushing headbutt Pokemon. I based this Pokemon off of the invasive species, the Hammerhead Worm. Uh, I wanted the pattern to make it look like a smaller creature was holding the central head in its mouth and using it as a weapon to crush their prey. This thing is the main predator to Orthworm in the region, pinning them down with their heads and eating them alive. I love how this Pokemon came together. This was a great addition, even if this thing is kind of terrifying. Spilucinate, the Illusion Venom Pokemon. The Magic Mushroom Mon everyone needs it to have in a region, at least once. This Pokemon didn't change much outside of fixing the legs and making the mushroom on its back much bigger. The eyes also got a slight tweak to them as well, mainly just removing the yellow from their color patterns. Mushroom patches I, I imagine would be a nightmare in a doubles match partnered with Glamora. Dexkinny and Mr. Mime, the distraction Pokemon. I base these off of rodeo clowns, which are often used to distract bulls so the cowboys can get away safely during uh, rodeos. This barely changed at all, just making the colors of sat Tad more saturated so it felt more clown-like. Solid entry, still creepy. 
Mr. Fine, the Balloon Clown Pokemon. I based this Pokemon off of the balloon tricks clowns will use to entertain, and still keeping the rodeo clown theme, of course. I wanted a good portion of this body to be made of balloons, hence the texture and shine on them. Believe it or not, the original was even creepier looking than this one was, so I toned it down massively to be less disturbing, and it's mostly succeeded in that regard. Geisteon, the Lonely Spirit Pokemon, the biggest change of the reboot. This Pokemon has completely shifted everything about it. The original was a discount Flareon, and now this is a, an absolute peak of an evolution. Naturally, it evolves with an Ecto Stone. You can typically find them at night during a full moon when you can track their footsteps in the moonlight. I love the colors on this mom, the spooky blue going going well with the skeleton pattering on the body. This is my favorite evolution that I have done thus far. Stingion, the toxic body Pokemon, evolves with a sludge stone. This little shit is based on various venomous animals, snakes, spiders, and scorpions primarily. This is barely changed in contrast to Geisteon, mainly getting a more defined body and changing the shape of the stinger at the end of the tail. The pattern on the face and back are to, supposed to resemble the hourglass on a Black Widow spider. Overall, it's a pretty damn good evolution, in my opinion. Rekilo, the demolition Pokemon. Revived from the ball fossil, this line is based on construction workers, the Ankylosaurus, and wrecking balls. Uh, this didn't change much, mainly give it thicker proportions and cutting down on the number of spikes in the back. I also fixed its little hard hat that makes it the top half of its head feel more 3D and natural looking. Sludge Kilo, the Hammer Flail Pokemon. I designed this Pokemon to resemble a Wrecking Ball slash Crane, the blue patches on the torso and legs supposed to look like windows, and the tail itself being the crane. This got a good redesign, mainly making this thing feel more stable in its lower body to support its massive tail. Middle of the pack in terms of my fossil mods, but still fun. A Crombo, the Multi-Strike Pokemon. Revived from the Quill Fossil, this is based on MMA fighting and the Acrocanthrosaurus. Aside from slightly altered proportions, this didn't change much going into the reboot. I did brighten the blue on the body to stand out more, but that's about it. A Crownter, the Retaliation Pokemon. Now this got an upgrade. I kept the basic pose, but I changed the angle so we can see more of the body. I modeled the colors to look like a MMA clothing, the loose pants, the hand coverings, and the wrapping around the body. The brow was supposed to look like a bandage you would put over your eyebrow, and the championship belt around the waist. I couldn't resist. This is one of the better fossil mons in my catalog. Venadori, the poison slug Pokemon. The pseudo-legendary of my region, this is one of the few dragon types I've done for a pseudo, with most of them being fairy. The entire line is based on the blue dragon sea slug. The body got some much-needed definition and shape to it now, the fins supporting its weight. I brightened the purple to stand out more visually. I still think this has the cute factor, despite how dangerous this thing really is. Dracopod, the poison slug Pokemon. I shrunk the body in the redesign, simplified the patterns on the torso, and the fin slash wing shape for a more cohesive look. Uh, I added the yellow to the eye to stand out against the rest of the color scheme. Uh, I really love the shiny on this stage. The pink really pops. Glaucaustic, the Slug Dragon Pokemon. The final stage in the line and the last Pokemon in my in-game team, this unit got an absolute upgrade in the second pass. I shrunk the body just a smidge, uh, changed the color scheme a good portion, and I moved the wings upwards to show off the colors underneath. This is easily one of... No, this is in my top three pseudos. I love how this design came out. Astropinch, the Guiding Light Pokemon. The patron legendary of the Texican region. I modeled this Pokemon after the Texas flag and the Lone Star of Texas. This got a near total redesign. The original was awful. The red, white, and blue with the gold trim really goes well in my eyes, and the galaxy energy behind the head at the end of the tail, I just can't say enough great things about it. This is the Pokemon Team Void was attempting to gain control of, but instead, they got something worse. 
I love Supernova as ability. I don't know if I will ever give it to another Pokemon. Wavelight, the satellite dragon Pokemon. Team Void ultimate weapon and the source of the sound type wave that encompassed the globe. This Pokemon was modeled after satellites and radar dishes. I wanted this Pokemon to feel like Genesect more than anything else. So a poor creature twisted into a mechanical monstrosity. My favorite thing about this design is easily the colors. And yes, noise pollution is kind of broken for hidden ability, but it's a legendary, so I give it a pass. Gullibus, the Star Eater Pokemon. The final legendary of the region and the Pokemon Team Void accidentally summoned to gain control of. This Pokemon is based on Gulper Eels and Black Holes. This thing is a galactic Pac-Man, eating everything in its path and turning it into fuel to propel itself forward. This is my favorite legendary of the three, possibly the best out of my entire catalog. The mouth having a black hole in it, I feel was a stroke of genius, and the tiny debris trapped in the exhaust just adds that little bit the design needed. This was barely changed from the original, just slightly altered proportions. Devouring Maw might need to be thrown into my uh, circulation. I'm debating that one. Well, that's the base region now complete, so it's time to head east a little bit to our DLC area. Weird reports have been cited by the locals. People in black suits abducting in people and Pokemon in the middle of the night. Strange flashes of light and people losing memories. Strange Pokemon have started showing up out of the blue. Well, I welcome you to the New Mexico-themed DLC of the Texican region, the land of Albafe. Amphibitrowl, the shoveled frog Pokemon. This line is based on Spadefoot Toads. They love to dig underground to stay out of the harsh heat and comes up when it starts to rain. Um, I really love this line a lot. I think they're clever if I allow myself to be arrogant for a second. The shovel tail and the earthy colors really sell the ground type at a glance for me. Uh, not much more to say here. That's a good first stage. Burtoad, the Terra Frog Pokemon, evolves when given a metal alloy, thank you Archalodon, and adds uh, excavators on top of the uh, Spadefoot basis for the design. For the longest time, I was going to have this Pokemon's legs be visible, but I could never get it to look right, so I pulled a Tarantula and buried it underground to help fix the issue. The Bright Silver really pops with this design in my eyes, showing off the brand new steel typing. This is overall just a really good Pokemon in my eyes. If you're curious what the legs look like, the feet are supposed to resemble excavators. Vitality, the victim Pokemon. The fish of the region, this line is based on the cutthroat trout. I leaned into the name with the pattern on the neck, making it look like it has a slit throat. Uh, took a few tries with this Pokemon to look less like Wishy Washy, but it turned out pretty good. I like the colors and the expression on it. Gut Trout, the Spirit Fin Pokemon. The evolved form of Vitality, this Pokemon now actually has a slit throat and gains the ghost type upon evolving. Get the Basque Legion jokes out of the way. I'll take it as a compliment when I get compared to the GOAT of Legends Arceus. Uh, I love the color scheme with this Pokemon. The saturated purple against the pale blue with the red highlights just does it for me overall. Uh, this is one of the best Pokemon in the DLC in my eyes. Corn Cushion, the popcorn Pokemon. Uh, this is a little bit of a sneak peek of sorts for the next rebooted region, as this Pokemon is another split evolution for a maze when it is given a combat stone. You'll be seeing that Pokemon it's very, very soon. I've been sitting on this idea for a long time, if just to use the pun of the name. I made this thing a brawling boxer, the popcorn being the headgear and the gloves. This is the bulkiest of the evolution trio so far. I really love the pink to uh, help break up the uh, color scheme. I think it really pops, especially in the eyes. Whiptile. The Tail Crack Pokemon. I based this mod off of Whiptail Lizards, and I naturally had to lean into the name with this Pokemon. 
Uh, I think the whip pattern on the tail actually came out very well without it being too overt. Uh, I love the color scheme, the red really popping with the black tail and eyebrows. Wong reaches a very good hint ability in my eyes. Nothing terribly broken, but still having a place against mods with flame body and other such similar abilities. Last Lizard, the Ranger Pokemon. The evolved form of whip tile, this Pokemon is the sheriff of the region, so to speak with them protecting weaker Pokemon and helping maintain the care of the ecosystem so nothing gets too out of whack. I leaped into the cowboy motif here, the head crest becoming the hat, the arms looking like pseudo gloves, the gold holsters on the side of its thighs. The tail can still function as a whip when it unfurls itself. This is honestly one of the best Pokemon of the DLC and the overall tech skin region. Uh, the fan Miltek, the space cow Pokemon. So for a minute, I've had a collaborator of sorts, mainly bouncing ideas back and forth with. This Pokemon was one of their suggestions, and they were really insistent I bring it into the DLC. Thankfully, the idea is actually very solid, and it was overall worth it. Um, this Pokemon is based around the idea of cow abductions, space suits, and astronaut ice cream. Normally, I would not have given Miltank a second thought for a regional variant, but this is actually worth it. Uh, I really do love the uh, colors on here. The render came out pretty good, and the planetoid uh, tail on the end just kind of helps cement the line for me. Torchorn, the concealed flame Pokemon. I based this Pokemon off of Bighorn Sheep, and this is honestly one of the best Pokemon of the DLC. I made it a rock type to reference the Bighorn Sheep's habit of telling gravity to fuck off as they climb cliff sides like it was nothing. The fire type was mainly for type balancing, but it added a lot to this design. I took a page from Typhlosion for the fire tail, and it really helps create a more interesting silhouette. Molten Core is one of the better hidden abilities I've given them on. The magma slash fire barely hidden under the rock peeping through, just waiting to be released. That was such a fun design detail to work on. Thunder Runner, the electric skater Pokemon. Evolves from Road Roller when given a Thunderstone. This is now based on the Greater Road Runner as well as the Flash. When I was first drafting up this DLC, this is one of the first Pokemon I listed down and it was worth the wait. This tail has become a streak of pure electrical energy that trails behind it wherever it goes. I stretched the neck out so it could lean forward more and also helps sell more of the differences between the evolution stages. I love the visor covering the eyes on this Pokemon so it can clearly see wherever it goes no matter how fast it is. This is a peak evolution in my eyes. Faustent, the Reduck Pokemon. Another suggestion from Yoshi. The Looney Tunes fanatic that he is, this is based on the instant Martians that serve Marvin the Martian. The reed on its head is used for camouflage as they will hide underwater when predators are near. That and it makes for a more interesting design and silhouette. Uh, I try to keep as many elements from the instant Martians as I could but make it still feel like a Pokemon. Thankfully the suggestion also fits in with the space theme I have with the Texcon region, so it wasn't too much of a stretch to put this line in here. Malartian, the duckweed Pokemon. Like the classification C says, the additional element of this Pokemon is duckweed, which is mainly represented in the patterns along the wings and at the top of the antenna. The color scheme is a bit much, admittingly, but it's eye-catching nonetheless. I think this Pokemon has a pretty good color balance overall, even if there are a tad too many for a normal Pokemon, admittingly. Albafea and Wooper, the Mountain Fish Pokemon. This entire line is based on the Jimenez Mountain Salamanders and Jewels. This is my favorite regional variant of the DLC, possibly even the entire Texcan region. I replaced the frills on the side of its head with hardened crystals and added one onto the forehead for extra protection and to help differentiate it from the other two variants of this line. I love the purple against the dark gray, contrasted with the blue of the jewels. I made this line a dragon type for type balancing and to play on the fact dragons live in caves. Something you'll also see in the next region reboot. I'm a fan Quagsire, the mountain fish Pokemon. I love the addition of gray fins and accents on the design here. 
along with the large purple patterns on the body. It's not a huge change from the base stage, but I think it's more fitting. Uh, normally, this would be underwhelming if this was the final stage of this evolutionary line. Good thing it isn't. Cragsire, the jewel dragon Pokemon. Admire the Sire. Evolves from Alba Fan Quagsire when it evolves holding a dragon's fang. I leaned into the lizard dragon aspect for the body and made it a large scaly noodle. I wanted this Pokemon to still feel friendly as the rest of the line despite being an absolute unit. Originally this had more crystals and jewels on the body but I toned it down so they felt more impactful and to not clutter the design. This is my favorite Pokemon of the DLC. Monumobile, the mountain home Pokemon, evolves from Stone Journer when it reaches maxed friendship, specifically in the land of Albafe. I base this off of the Bandelier National Monument in New Mexico. This Pokemon acts as a safe haven for weak Pokemon to hide in until predators leave the immediate area, which is one of the reasons I help give it the fairy type. I think the render on this Pokemon really helps bring the design together. I try to keep as much as Stone Journer in the evolution as I could while still making it feel different, uh, mainly in the arms, legs, and face. This was another one of the first Pokemon I planned for the DLC. Neuralizard, the classified Pokemon, a man-made legendary Pokemon created by a shady government agency to suppress knowledge of extraterrestrial Pokemon and battle them in secret. I based this and the other Legendary off of the Men in Black franchise as well as Area 51. I wanted this Pokemon to look like it was wearing a suit and sunglasses like classic Men in Black agents, with its finger being the noisy cricket from the movies. I think this Pokemon has the perfect amount of visual elements going on. It's just busy enough without it being overwhelming. Memory Wipe is kind of broken as an ability, but I feel it's very manageable if you keep switching in and out. Pest Terrestrial, the Roach King Pokemon. Based on Edgar the Bug from the first Men in Black film, this is the other legendary of the Land of Alphafe. I love this Pokemon so much, no matter how much of a pain in the ass it was to figure out the proportions and limb placement. I really need to do more Bug-type legendary Pokemon. Evolve is another hidden ability I could possibly give out to more Pokemon, but I kind of want to make this a one-and-done exclusive for this Pokemon. Well, with that, the DLC and the Texican region is now complete. I want to thank everyone who made it this far into the video. Leave a like down below, as well as your in-game team if you have one. Uh, suggestions on how to improve the next video is always welcome. 20 likes and I will get started immediately on the next region reboot video, the Vanek region. This is Austin, signing out.